So calculus majors were super cool and gave us these areas under the curve 34, 14, 2. So if they land nicely on the zero, a one standard deviation above the mean or two standard deviations above the mean or negative one, negative two, we knew kind of roughly what areas we were looking at. We ran into a glitch though when the numbers we're looking for didn't land nicely on a zero, one, or a two. So they created a table for us so we don't have to do integrals, which is super cool. So this table is everything we would need to now look into other numbers and see what the probabilities in certain areas are. So this looks like a lot of information, but I'm going to break it down for you. Um, it's actually just three columns, A, B, C. It just looks like more because it's wrapped. They're just trying to account for every possible z-score. And oh, I, d I should say that this table is different than the one in the back of your book. And that's because I like this table better. <laughs> um, but once we've kind of mastered this one, then I'll show you how the table in the back of your book is doing the exact same thing. You're allowed to use either on the test. Um, I have this one linked in the course and you can use this one. Um, it's whatever works best for you. So here we have three columns, and these are the z-scores. So we're going to calculate the z-score for the numbers that don't fall nicely in that 34, 14, 2 range. And then this table is going to tell us the area under the curve associated with each of those z-scores based on what's pictured. So if the b column is kind of in the middle and the c column on the end. I'm going to start by describing the c column because I think it makes the most sense, and then I'll show you what the b column is. So let's think about that picture in our heads of 34, 14, 2. And remember, if somebody had a z-score that was 2 above the mean, then the calculus majors told us there were 2% of people above them, right? So they had a z-score of 2, then they have 2% of people above them. Let's see what this table says. So I'm going to find a z-score of 2. Now, I'm scrolling through here. Now, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.7. That's not going to work. Here's 1.3, 1 1.4. Okay, that's not going to work. So I have to scroll down. we will go on the next page. Here I have 1.9, and then here we go, 2.00. So this is a z-score of 2.00, and I'm going to scroll over to the C column, because remember, that's the one that I want to talk about first. I said it was 2%. Calculus major said, well, you know, actually it's a proportion of 0 0.0228, otherwise a 2.28%. So I said 2%. They said it's exactly 2.28%. So they're more exact than I am. I say roughly saying 34, 14, 2 works just as well for me. But you can see that with the 2.00, they have told us that that's 2.28%. Now they report these numbers in proportions, 0 0.0228. But we would have to just, if we wanted to ask that uh, or answer that in a percent, you just have to move that decimal point over to, and so that would be 2.28%. All right, let's think again about what they've told us. Um, if we're doing the 34, 14, 2, we know that, let me um, actually draw a picture, so I'm going to switch screens really quick. So if we go back to our picture here, remember if we have our mean marker, and then we have one standard deviation above the mean, and two standard deviations above the mean, and then we have negative 1 and negative 2. So remember, we just looked up that I said this area here was 2%. The calculus major said it was roughly 2.28%. And then also, so I, um, the calculus major, as I said, said 14, sorry, 34, 14, 2. Now let's say we wanted to look up um, what percent of scores were above a z-score of 1. So that's from this line all the way over. So you see how we would do the 14% and the 2%, that would give us a total of 16%, right? So according to my rough estimates of 34, 16% of people are going to score above the z-score of 1. Now let's go back and look at the table and see what the calculus majors told us that it's going to be. So we're going to go back to our table here. Now let's go ahead and find a z-score of 1.00. So we can actually go back up to this first page here. And it always takes a little while to orient, so don't, take, don't worry about it taking time to figure out where you are. Take your time. But if I look at this here, here's my 1.00. In the C column, the calculus major said it is exactly 15.87%. I said roughly 16. They said 15.87. I say darn close enough. 
right? And so what I'm trying to show you here is that this table is going to give us the areas under the curve. We've just established some landmarks that we're aware of, but if we had a z-score that was, let's say, a little bit further out, like a 1.11, you see how the calculus majors say, oh, that's going to be 13.35% in the upper area. And so um, these scores are uh, giving us exactly what we want. If we can roughly do it with the 34.14.2, that's great. But sometimes we're going to find ourselves not able to do that. Um, now, I just want to highlight, that was the C column. And we can see that the C column was telling us basically whatever our z-score was, the area associated above it. Now let's talk about what the B column is. The B column is saying whatever your z-score was to the mean. So if I go back down to 1.00, remember I had said it's 34% from the mean to the first standard deviation. Roughly 34%. The calculus majors say it's 34.13%. So essentially what they're doing is they're just giving you that middle section of the distribution. And so you can see that drawn here. You obviously didn't need both of these because if you know one, you know the other. So if I go back down to this 1.00, if I know that this is 16%, well, 50% minus 16% is going to give me the 34%. So I didn't really need them to report both numbers, but it's sure darn handy to have them there. Now, you'll notice this down here at the bottom. That looks a little different. And when we print, printed this table, notice they don't have any negative z-scores here, but there are negative z-scores. Well, the reason they didn't need to do that is because these are symmetrical. So if we look up what the area is um, from a z-score of 1 to the very tip, it would be roughly 16%. Well, if we did it down here from a negative 1 down to this tip, then it would be 16%. So they're just reminding you here that if these are negative z-scores, it's going to be the same area because it's symmetrical. You just have to remember that when it's positive score, it's from this score above. And when it's the negative score, it's from this line below. But otherwise, the kind of the context of the area under the curve conceptually is the same. So now we're going to practice with the question we had started at the end of the last video. Remember I had said, let's say somebody drives 80 miles per hour. So we're going to want to figure out how many people go faster than 80 miles per hour. So let's go back to that screen. So if we draw what the question was that we had, remember we had 75 miles per hour, then we went up in increments of 10. Um, there we go. And now let me go ahead and add in the calculus majors rough estimates of 34, 14, 2. And now our question really was, um, if somebody has a score of 80, let's say that would be right about here, what percent of people go faster than them? So first, I'd like you to take stock of what we do know. We know the number has to be larger than 16%, right? Because 16% gets us from this place over to 80. I'm sorry, 85. So we know the number has to be um, bigger than 85, be sorry, bigger than 16, because that's this zone here, and we have a little bit left over. We also know the number has to be less than 50, because this next landmark is the 50 mark. So it's some, a number somewhere between 16 and 15. And that's a huge range, but that's okay. At least it gives us some sense. Now notice that I chose a number that's halfway between 75 and 85. And sometimes students think, oh, I know. If this area here, let's just kind of redraw it here for a second. If this area here is 34%, and I'm going to cut it in half, then maybe it would be half of the 34% on this side and half of the 34% on that side. And actually, it doesn't work that way. And the reason it doesn't work that way is because they're not the same area. If you look at this closely, see how this part of the distribution on the left is taller? This is shorter over here. So there's actually not the same surface area on the other side of that halfway mark. So while it feels like you should be able to just take that area 34 and divide it by 2, it doesn't work that way. We're going to have to ask the calculus majors to do the work for us. So I'm going to just clean up my screen because I made it really super messy. All right, so we have 75, and I want to know what percent of people get an 80% or above. 
So now let's talk about what our steps are. The first one, make sure I get my handwriting nicer, is always want to draw it. The students who tend to not get these questions right, um, they tend to not take the time to draw it. So you want to make sure you draw it. The second step is we have to calculate our z-score. So we're going to have to calculate our z-score so we can look it up in the table. And then that looking it up in the table is the last step. So these are our steps to answering this question. So let's go ahead and calculate our z-score here. We had, um, actually I do it in red so we can stay consistent with what we're doing. Our z-score, remember it's your score minus the mean. So in this case, your score would be 80 minus 75. And then remember that our standard deviation was in units of 10. So we're going to divide by 10. So that's going to be 5 divided by 10. And that's going to be a 0 0.5 z-score, which makes sense because remember, the first standard deviation mark was at 85. And so this is kind of halfway between the 1 and the 0. So it makes sense that the z-score is 0 0.5. So we know our z-score is 0 0.5. And now I want to look up in the table what percentage of scores are above a z-score of 0 0.5. So let's go look at the z-table. So now we have our z-table pulled up. Now we want to find a 0 0.5. Now be careful. Don't go looking up 0 0.05. That's a different number. We want to look up 0 0.5. So if I find a 0 0.5, and remember, my question was, what percent of scores are above the 0 0.5? So if I look at my picture, clearly the C column is answering that question well, above my number. This line represents my number. So if I come down to 0 0.5, the C column is going to tell me the answer is 30, or sorry, the proportion is 0 0.3085, otherwise known as 30.85. So if I come back here, my answer to this question is, once my z-score I found is 0.5, then I know the answer is 30.85% of people Oh, that's supposed to say percent. Sorry, it's not working. Um, drive faster than this person who went 80 miles per hour. So we were able to use the z-table to find an area that wasn't given to us, which is that 34.14.2. So in the next videos, we're going to do even more complicated questions where we really need to use the table a lot to, to answer. But I would like you to take away that the bottom line is, it doesn't matter what you ask. I can tell you the probability uh, of a range of scores now that I have this table. It doesn't have to land nicely on a, a standard deviation mark. I think it can land anywhere in this distribution. And I know the likelihood of going faster, uh, slower, between two speeders or whatever. So this is a lot of great information for us to use moving forward when we go into inferential statistics to talk about the likelihood of people living this long or, or having this success on these behavioral markers. If, if they were just normal, what's the chance they would have such high scores? Well, I can tell you exactly the likelihood of them falling there. So let's continue to practice and see what else we can get from this table.